Tonight on News 5 Live, the KHMH Workers' Union raises serious concerns about government's proposed 90 million hospital in Belmopan. A new contractor general is sworn in. News 5 gets its hand on the definitive agreement between GOB and Portico Enterprises. And in this week's edition in Belize on Real, we look at the shortage of dog chow across the country. These stories and more coming up on News 5 Live. At BEL, we remain committed to delivering safe, reliable and sustainable energy solutions to communities across Belize. We are connecting more homes and businesses to enhance the quality of life and the productivity of enterprise and to support national development. We are always here for you. It's that time of the year when we honor our moms and show them how much we love and appreciate them. Visit us at Cellular World and we can help you find a great gift for her. With our Mother's Day steals and heartfelt deals, show your love in a special way with our crazy discounts on great gift options so you can spoil your mom without breaking the bank. From luxurious tech products to stylish and affordable accessories. Budget phones as low as $59. Tablets start at only $149. Speakers as low as $45. TVs start at only $519. And laptops and Chromebook for only $499. Wireless chargers, smartwatches, accessories, and so much more. Visit us at any of our five locations in Belize City, Belmopan, and San Pedro. Or shop via our virtual store on Facebook, Instagram, or WhatsApp at 615. 5141. Shop with us to find the perfect gift that will make your mom feel extra special. Universal Hardware announces its Mega Sale 2023 to be on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, May 25, 26, and 27. Leaf on motorcycles, Makita Power Tools, Shindaiwa trimmers, Hunter Ceiling Fans, Easy Care Paint, and Sankey AC Units. Everything on incredible discounts to increase your productivity. Universal Hardware, your solutions provider on Chetamal Boulevard, Belize City. Here's your chance. The stage is waiting. We're looking for talented Belizean singers for another season of KTV The Remix. KTV auditions will take place on Saturday, June 3rd and Sunday, June 11th starting at 9.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. at Channel 5 on Coney Drive in Belize City. We're also now accepting online submissions. Two-minute videos can be emailed to producer at channel5belize.com or DM KTV Remix on Facebook. Deadline, Sunday, June 11 at 5 p.m. Come be a part of the biggest singing competition of the year. KTV The Remix only on Channel 5. Dengue and Zika alert. Do your part by preventing mosquito breeding. The Ministry of Health reminds the public that as we enter the rainy season, be aware of the dangers of dengue, chikungunya, and Zika. These are infectious diseases that are transmitted by the bite of Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus mosquitoes. These mosquitoes are most active in early morning and late afternoon. Activities that should be done to prevent dengue and Zika include, avoid having containers that can collect water in your yard, 
Recover water storage containers such as drums. Change the water in flower pots every four or five days. These are ideal breeding sites for the mosquito. With the elimination of breeding sites in and around the yard, dengue and Zika can be avoided. Dengue and Zika begin with sudden onset of high fever. Other signs and symptoms include rash, joint pain, eye pain. If you are pregnant or planning to become pregnant, we advise you to visit your nearest health facility. The public is also encouraged to use mosquito repellent spray or lotion on the body or clothing. Do your part by preventing mosquito breeding. A health and wellness message from your Ministry of Health. Good evening and welcome to News 5 Live for Thursday, May 25th. I am Sabrina Daly. The Bersenio administration's plan to build a $90 million health facility in Belmopan is being met with concern, as well as serious criticism from various corners, including the KHMH Workers' Union. The tertiary care hospital boasts a capacity of 150 beds, and will be financed through a loan from the Saudi Fund for Development. Last Friday, Prime Minister John Bersenio, during the sitting of the House of Representatives, said that the Carl Huchner Memorial Hospital can no longer meet the increasing demands at the national and regional levels. While he was pleased to mention that the loan, which carries a concessionary rate of 2 percent, is the result of diplomatic relations between Belize and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the idea for a new hospital is being called to question by the KHMHWU. Earlier today, the union issued a press release indicating that there is a serious shortage of nurses and doctors at the KHMH. As it stands, the National Referral Hospital is operating with fewer nurses and doctors, and the Ministry of Health and Wellness has been unable to address the unavailability. According to the release, despite the vision of the KHMH, including future expansion of the facility, in its 28 years of existence, the hospital has been unable to realize its full potential due to political interference. Coupled with a shortage of medical personnel, the public health sector has also been lacking services such as physiotherapy, laboratory technicians, medical and nursing services, as well as basic supplies and equipment. To that point, the union asks where the technological and human resources will be drawn from, considering the, perce the, pr the present situation at the KHMH. The question is also being asked whether the decision taken by government is to undermine the KHMH. The $90 million says the KHMHWU can be invested in other areas of health care, including capacity building for nursing education, hemodialysis, oncology, cardiology and accident and emergency services. The money, says the union, can also be used to create retention strategies for nurses, upgrade the ambulance fleet and increase human resources. In response to the Prime Minister's announcement last Friday, opposition leader Shine Barrow objected to the $90 million loan being used to construct a new hospital. We live in a country where our public health facilities, KHMH, Western Region, Southern Region, Northern Region, does not even have the minimum essential equipment, items needed to treat patients, Madam Speaker, and we, as a government, is going to borrow $90 million to build 
a 110 bed facility to do what we need to invest in the public health care facilities that we currently have madam speaker that is the necessity that is what the people of belize are crying for that is what the medical practitioners are crying for madam speaker you cannot convince me that you're going to do anything more than just give that contract to one of your favorite cronies and just build a building that will sit there and do nothing fix the problem that we have at khmh fix the problem that we have at the other public health facilities we have a public health facility right here in Belmopan. why not get the money and invest in what we have you know madam speaker this government is like a, a rockhead government at the last house meeting prime minister john Bersenio introduced the civil asset recovery an unexplained wealth bill the proposed legislation once passed empowers the financial intelligence unit to reclaim ill-gotten assets and wealth obtained through criminal activities it is a bold step that will see not only politicians and public officers but also private citizens brought under the microscope. Deputy Prime Minister Cordell Hyde spoke with the media briefly about the implications of this proposed legislation. It will have teeth. Um, it's a very, very serious legislation and people all over the country should take note, should be served warning, not just politicians but also public officers, anybody in public life and anybody outside of public life if you end up with property that you cannot account for, you can lose that property and more. And you can lose that property. This legislation is saying you can lose that property without a court conviction, you know. Right? But remember, this thing is, it was only table in the House on Friday. It's um, going to House Committee. They are, well, people will have an opportunity to review it and to have their input. But it's a very, very serious piece of legislation. So all the people where they do things, I mean, they do things, they have to get serious because they will get humbug. Right? Just say, just say put them on one in. But is there a statute of limitation for this proposed legislation? It's a question that was posed to Minister of Human Development, Families and Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Dolores Balderamos Garcia. She too chimed in on the civil asset recovery and unexplained wealth bill, which the National Trade Union Congress of Belize believes will provide greater transparency and accountability. If we want to be a part of the international community and we want to be a respectful player both regionally and internationally, then I think we have to toe the line. We have to, it's not nice for everybody, um, you know, because, because people will say, well, you know, all of a sudden they're going to be looking at me and I don't, you know, I don't have to be criminally charged, but yet they can look at my big house. We have to do it. If we, if we believe in our international commitments to reduce corruption to the best of our ability, then I believe that we, we need to do it. Now, it has been introduced. There is still a lot of time for our partners to go to the committee at the National Assembly to give their input. But I think that we are moving in the right direction, even though it might, it might pinch somebody toe in their shoes. But I think we have to do this to be a good international player, a good um, partner in reducing transnational crimes and, and all that sort of thing. There, so there are limitations in terms of how far back it goes? Make we see what comes up in the committee, all right? And do you think this uh, is one that the public should be paying attention to, absolutely. just like when the trade absolutely. Is because it may impact them? Absolutely, because if we complain about people who have these big house and big boat and mansion and hotel and everything and small salary, then we have to be serious at looking into it. A new contractor general whose functions include the monitoring of the award and implementation of public contracts to ensure their conformity with procurement-related rules and laws was sworn in today. This morning at Belize House, 
Career Public Officer Maria Arthurs was administered the oath of office by Governor General Farla Salam. During the sitting of the House of Representatives on April 23rd, Prime Minister John Bersenio announced her appointment. Arthurs, who had been working with the Ministry of Finance, succeeds Omar Mitchell as the new Contractor General. I, Maria Arthurs, do swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance to Belize and will uphold the Constitution and the law and that I will conscientiously, impartially and to the best of my ability discharge my duties as Contractor General and do right to all manner of people without fear or favor, affection or ill will, so help me God. And with that, let me be the first to congratulate you <laughs> Thank on your you. new responsibility. Or added Thank you, Her Excellency. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Arthur's appointment is for a period of three years, effective June 1st. Coming up, Fair Trade hosts lunch gathering for elders in Orange Walk Town. Find out the details of these stories when we come back. Adopting a second child was our best decision ever. Now our daughter Alexis has a little brother to play with. Know that we have our son, our family is complete. Contact the Department of Human Services and find out how you can become a foster or adoptive parent and be that heart of gold. Sip, sip, sip. Member owners of the Holy Redeemer Credit Union Limited, your credit union cordially invites you to attend its 79th AGM on Saturday, May 27th, commencing at 2 p.m. sharp at the Belize Civic Center. Come listen to important reports and information about your credit union and get the opportunity to ask questions and elect your officers, as well as participate in winning thousands of dollars in cash prizes. Currently, we have over 63,000 members with total assets of $725 million, total savings of $602 million, and total equity of $122 million. Please make every effort to attend your 79th HRCU AGM and remember to bring along your HRCU passport and a valid photo ID to enter the venue. Holy Redeemer Credit Union, making a difference in people's lives. Start thinking of ways now how we could build our dream house on our land, you know, because we have a land now. A long time dream make it become a reality. I was a yard with for my land certificate and I came here today and I finally got it. So I want to shout out to the minister eh, for call and help the poor people then over the side I get their certificate. I own my my house in Coral Grove and I've tried to get my title some years and years and years. Things never happen before time. I think that this is my time and I think that I'll get my documents. It's very hard to get your documents here and I don't own any piece of land in Belize and I'm finally get, 
trying to get my documents together. Every Belizean look forward to own a piece of this paradise and you know you really cherish Belize when you own a piece of Belize. People have land matters that they have been unable to, to settle for months and years. At this land clinic, every effort is being made to make sure that those matters are settled once and for us. We have to go to the people, that's why we take them up and to the people, that's why we sometimes have to double back to our constituency more than one time. We have to traverse the entirety of the country because some of these problems are long-standing and people don't really have the wherewithal to up and down to Belmont Pond or up and down to our district office every time. But when we come out to the people, we are able to expedite the process, able to address their issues in a very prompt and very um, efficient kind of way. Trade provides millions of dollars in premiums annually to sugarcane farmers in northern Belize. Today, Belize recognized World Fair Trade Day under the theme Choose Fair Trade, Choose a Better Future. For background, fair trade is defined as an arrangement designed to help producers in developing countries achieve sustainable and equitable trade relationships. The Belize Sugarcane Farmers Association was the first association in the country to receive fair trade cert certification for its products. Since then, all other sugarcane farmers associations have received fair trade certifications. In line with its mission to invest in community development programs, Fair Trade's regional office provided lunch for members of Help Age Today in Orange Walk Town. We spoke with Juan Vargas, the chairman of Help Age Orange Walk. Fair trade helps a lot in community work. They're very active in community work, all right? And help age, we deal with helping the elders. And our main role is to try to link with people who can assist us with whatever activities we have programmed. We live out of donations. We are a group of volunteers. So any organization that comes in and tells you, you know what, we have this, we can help you with this, we can assist you, we willingly pick that up and we run with it and we try to get their support because we know that whatever we get them all with, we can look at it in terms of a long-term thing, whereby I know some help will be coming to us, which is very good for our, for our old people. Help Orange Orange Walk is involved in providing a bag of basic food necessities for about 60 elders monthly. Okay? Then we are also organizing activities to try to bring in people at the center so that they can have a little bit of fun, have a conversation with their peers, uh, and just interact, simple interaction goes a long way in helping, this, helping our elders. So that is our, our mantra. We try to organize this kind of activities. As a part of today's World Fair Trade Day celebrations, an Orange Walk Fair Trade logo was officially launched. We've told you about associations being Fair Trade certified, but there are also opportunities available for towns to be Fair Trade certified. A committee has been established to certify Orange Walk Town as the first fair trade town in the region. This is a huge step for Sugar City and John Burgos, the chairman of the Orange Walk Fair Trade Committee, told us more. The primary goal uh, of the committee is to get the Orange Walk Town, the municipality of Orange Walk Town, to be recognized as a fair trade town globally. Uh, as you know, fair trade is a global movement uh, started in Europe, but it has expanded to South America and now they want to expand it to, to Central and the Caribbean. So if Orange Walk be, does, does become a fair trade town, we are going to be making history because we're going to be the first one in the region no. to do that. We cannot be saying, yes, we, we need to package, prepare. We also need to provide a forum and the opportunity for them to present, showcase and sell the product. So we're going to do the first of four Fair, um, Orange Jack Fair Trade Market this. So it's going to be on the 1st of July starting at 9 o'clock in the morning and it's going to end around 5 in the evening. So we're going to showcase all these locally products. So you want to go get the best ricotta of Orange Jack, the best honey, the best coconut oil, you know, the best fruits. We are going to have people selling a lot of local plants. They're going to have all of this available. And of course, food plays a big role. So we're going to be focusing on local Maya Mestizo cuisine. Come get the best tamales in the country, the best relleno, the best escabeche. These are the things that we want to begin to promote and highlight. 
The Ministry of Human Development and the National Women's Commission wrote to the General Manager of Tropical Vision Limited, Channel 7, last week expressing its discontent with the reporting of a sexual assault case from Southern Belize that is under investigation. In the report, explicit details of the offense allegedly perpetrated against the female victim were broadcast and is being described as a re-victimization of the victim. Minister Dolores Balderamos Garcia says they, there are limits to freedom of information and expression and she is not pleased with that media house. Today she spoke about the incident and said that they are seeking the advice of the Belize Broadcasting Authority. There is a difference between accurate and responsible reporting and turning everything sensational in a sort of a tabloid way. And I'll try to be kind um, to Mr. Vasquez, but we honestly believe, and we have proof of this, that that kind of sensational reporting can do more damage than good. The public has a right to know, and the journalism... Have a duty to tell. Uh, the, the, the public has a right to know, and so the journalists have a duty to tell. But there are limits. There are limits to freedom of expression, and there are limits to how you report things. I can tell you, please, I, I, you know, I may, be, I may be stepping over a little line here, but I can tell you that the damage that has been done, and we are well aware of this, and the Special Envoy herself can tell you, the damage that has been done because of that particular report is grave. Because what it does, it further victimizes and re-victimizes the person who suffered the injustice. And the young lady is suffering and doesn't even want to come out of her house, right? Now you are telling me another version of the thing. I can't speak to that because I don't know that to be so. And I'm, I'm, I'm upset about this. You can go and speak to the broadcasting authority themselves, but really we have found that Channel 7 has gone too far in terms of this kind of reporting at times. Minister Dolores Balderamos Garcia goes on to say that there were inaccuracies in the report as it relates to the response from the authorities on the matter. She describes it as twisting of facts. There was no inaction on the part of the authorities. Not everything I do to help women, and I have advocated for women for 40 years, not everything that I do, I have to go and talk it out there. They, they, I acted immediately on getting that report, even though I never received a hard copy of that particular letter. Immediately I got that report, I acted. That's speaking for myself now. As far as the Ministry of Health is concerned, I believe that they put the matter to the Public Service Commission and also to the Medical Council. But this young lady, I can report to you faithfully, is suffering a lot because of the way that story was presented, the detail that it went into, and the twisting, the journalistic twisting for sensationalism and tabloid journalism that is unacceptable in Belize today. On Wednesday, Deputy Prime Minister Cordell Hyde discussed the likelihood of new legislation being introduced in Parliament to address the issue of Port of Magical Belize. This succeeded an announcement made by Portico Enterprises on May 23rd regarding the signing of a memorandum of understanding with both Calis International and the Royal Caribbean Group to form a joint venture to develop, manage and operate the Port of Magical Belize. Prior to that statement, Portico had been going back and forth with Stake Bank Enterprise in respect of a definitive agreement that issued under the Barrow administration. That much talked about document proved to be elusive and several former government ministers, including Tracy Panton and Attorney General Michael Perifit, are on record stating that they had no knowledge or input where the agreement is concerned. Tonight, News 5 has gotten a copy of the definitive agreement signed between the government of Belize and Portico Enterprises on October 1, 2020. The formal contract was between the Ministry of Economic Development and Portico Enterprises, the parent company of Port of Magical Belize. The 31-page document signed by former Minister of Economic Development, Erwin Contreras, states, quote, The developer has invested directly and indirectly considerable finances, 
time and other resources in and for the conceptual design and preliminary business plan for the development, construction, operation and management of a cruise ship docking facility, including access channel and other maritime and offshore structures required thereonto and strategically locate therein duty-free stores, concession stands, beaches, restaurants, bars and a hotel of 300 rooms with casino throughout the terminal and its surroundings. The project facility is located on the coast of the Belize District, some three miles south of the Saboon River, Belize District, end quote. News 5 will continue to pursue this document and provide additional details in our subsequent newscast. After the break, why is dog chow scarce and now so expensive? We'll tell you more on that, but first, here's the weather update with data from the Belize Met Service. Brian and Marta were arriving at school when they saw teacher Lewis standing at the door and when he saw them, he waved at them. The kids were both excited to be able to tell him about the things they had discussed with their parents. They quickly approached teacher Lewis, who was supervising entrance of all the students to the classroom. Brian and Marta told him everything, and finally when they were finished speaking, the teacher congratulated them on the good job they had done. Congratulations to both of you. You have done a great job, and today we will start with the planting of mangroves, which I can assure you will be of great benefit to all of us who live here in the coast. All the students gathered in the classroom while teacher Lewis explained the activity that they were going to do on the beach. He told them about the importance of mangroves as protective barriers against winds, protection of the coastline, and important places where the fishery eat and sell, lay their eggs. Finally, the teacher asked the kids to organize in working groups, and they all left the school heading to the beach. On the beach, many people were surprised to see the children collecting garbage, collecting mangrove seeds, and sowing them in the places suggested by the organization that was helping with the activity in the community. Finally, after working for a while, Mr. Martin approached the group. Teacher Lewis, can you tell what the boys are doing on the beach? Shouldn't they be in school studying, or are they now being trained in planting? On the contrary, Mr. Martin, these young people are learning about measures to adapt to the effects of climate change and by planting mangroves, they are learning about something known as ecosystem-based adaptation. In other words, using the benefits from nature to better adapt to these changes. And do you want to tell me what this is all about? I need further explanation. Sure, Mr. Martin. You see, my hotels here on the beach have placed breakwaters to prevent the sea from entering their property and eroding the beach, but that part, apart from being expensive, is not effective since the sand that accumulates in certain parts is lost in others. On the other hand, ecosystem-based adaptation seeks to use the services that nature provides. For this reason, by planting mangroves, we ensure by means of the roots to protect and recover the beach, preventing it from continuing to be lost. In the end, we not only preserve the beach, we also create shelters for fish and birds and protect the beach houses from storms. A lot of people had gathered around teacher Lewis while he explained all of this to Mr. Martin. Hearing the benefits and importance of what the youths were doing, several persons and entire families began to help clean the beaches and plant mangroves. In the end, there were hundreds of people working along the entire public beach. 
At the end of the day, it was observed that even Mr. Martin was helping too. He was seen arriving at the beach with coolers with water and food for everyone, encouraging everyone to keep working. Brian and Marta were proud to see how their actions were paying off and people were becoming aware of climate change, supporting actions to adapt and take care of nature. For a smart share plan and save big. Whether you're a small entrepreneur starting up your business, a student on a limited budget, or a family trying to save, this is the plan for you. With unlimited SMS, calls, and data, we help you save. Get up to five lines for as low as $30 per line monthly, only with smart. Sign up today at any smart showroom or sales manager countrywide. So get your business going, share more memories with friends and be ready for the day with smart. Over the last few months, dog owners and rescuers have seen a scarcity of dog chow and have had to make instant decisions as to what other brand to use as alternatives. When those products also became limited, the headache was to make yet another adjustment to their pet's diet. When the various brands of dog, dog chow became available again, there was a noticeable increase in prices, some of which almost doubled what they cost before the shortage. So, what happened? News 5's Marion Alley went looking for the answers in this week's edition of Belize on Real. If you're a dog owner, you would have noticed a sudden scarcity in two major brands of dog chow. Pedigree and Purina disappeared almost simultaneously off the shelves in many stores and supermarkets countrywide. What happened? COVID caused the, close, the closing of a lot of factories in the United States. Since COVID, most of those factories have not recovered for many reasons. One, many employees are being paid, are being paid by the American government not to go to work. They were getting more money not going to work. The new, the new American government raised the, the salaries, so it was very difficult to compete with in, in old jobs with the current salaries. This causes a spiral upward effect of everything because then everybody, labor went up, Cost of goods went up, trucking went up, fuel is up. Everything caused a huge spiral in effect. This create, the shortage created in the United States created a, a bigger shortage in the export market. So it's creating a further shortage in the United States because they're sucking off all the stocks from Costco, Walmart, Price Mart, okay. and these kind of people in there. And, that, and then as a result, the products landed in these countries are a higher price, but they're not export priced. The shortage of Pedigree and Purina brands drove up the demand for other imported brands. Rufo is actually a second choice of people, you know. Yeah. Um, Rambokan, well, they are um, nice, uh, all right brand too, so I believe they, they, they was going down well, yeah, because um, there's competitor, and, you know, more sales coming. I see you have pedigree in stock now, though. How did that happen? Um, actually, they, those are what we just recently get it from just yesterday. Yeah? Yeah, and it's limited stock. We understand that the limited supply of pedigree that is presently available has been secured from across the northern border. Today, while there is not an acute scarcity of dog chow, the prices that they come with are exceedingly high, particularly those top brands. Philip Galathy of Victor L. Bryant and Company Limited says importers are not to blame. I wouldn't say it's that much inflation locally, no. You, you, the, 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 the intrinsic costs are 80% uncontrollable because you have to deal with the sourcing, you have to deal with the logistics of getting there, and the duties and taxation issues. We, we have no, nobody has any control over that. Well, I used to buy in Adidas, used to be $2 or even 175 you know? Yeah. And right now, um, 
<laughs> I guess it's like 150 is 21 phone for 50, $150, dollars, that would be like six stars and so. Yeah. Yeah. Have you found that sales went down since the prices went up? Well, of course, you know, because... People things, buy less now? Of course, yeah. People yeah, will, I think it. people will choose the next brand of the food. The dietary change in the types of dog chow, however, may have an effect on your animal. But if you're completely out and you go switch to a new food, um, you might have digestive issues with the dog. So you might have a little bit of vomiting, diarrhea, and they might go off the food because it's not what they're accustomed to eating. But then this is something that you as the pet owner would need to monitor. So if it's just a temporary issue, then you could continue with the food. Now sometimes if you are able and you have the smaller quantity left of the original food that you were given, then you can start to mix in over a seven day period to the food that you're switching to. So um, then you would have less issues with the digestive problem. Dr. Jane Crawford, a veterinary surgeon at Animal Medical Center, says that different brands of dog chow contain different ingredients. So when you're looking at protein or a meat source, you could either have beef, chicken, turkey, fish. So you're looking at that. Then you also have different grains. So they have corn, rice, barley. All of that would make the different food. So depending on the food and on the quality, all the foods there are different. The inflated cost of dog chow have forced many owners to seek more affordable options. Some have turned to meat shops to provide them with bone dust, which is simply the residue from meats that are left on a meat saw at the end of the day. It resembles ground beef, sells for a dollar a pound, and Dr. Crawford says it can be cooked for a few minutes with other ingredients as a healthy meal for your furry friends. So if you're using the bone dust, then you probably want to, because you're looking at, you want protein, then you also want carbohydrate. So you're looking at a balanced diet as much as possible as you can. So with some dogs, you can add different stuff. So you could do, you could do your rice as a starch or, or, or pasta or potato as starch. Then you have, yes, then you have, you could add vegetables. For people who feed their dogs only leftover food and table scraps, Crawford says it is not safe to give your dogs onions and garlic because those are toxic to them and over time they can cause severe health issues for your dogs. Reporting for News 5, I'm Marion Ali. And while we now have a better idea of what foods we can mix and cook for our dogs, there is also another serious health concern that dog owners might want to pay keener attention to if you want to have your dog until its twilight years. Veterinary surgeon Dr. Jane Crawford says that there has been a spike in the number of heartworm detections among the dogs that visit the Animal Medical Center. Crawford says the vets think it's because dog owners are not administering the heartworm preventative pills every month to their pets. Right now we're seeing a lot more cases with heartworm disease in dogs. And I think one of the reasons we're attributing to is because of the, the rise of the use of the next guard tablet. So a lot of people give in the next guard and they stop giving the heart guard. Or they're giving the heartworm preventative. A lot of people have been saying you give the heartworm or the next guard every three months, you give a heartworm every three months. But heartworm prevention needs to be administered on a monthly basis, every month. And next guard does not include that treatment? The next guard by itself, but you have the next guard spectra, which includes the heartworm prevention. So if you're doing the next guard spectra, you have to give it every month. If you're doing the next guard and heart guard, you have to give the heart guard every month. Or it doesn't necessarily have to be heart guard, it can be any other um, heartworm prevention, but the heartworm prevention has to be given on a monthly basis to dogs. What causes heartworm? Mosquitoes, it's a bite from the mosquito. So the mosquito transmit it. So one dog has it, the mosquito bites that dog and it will transmit it to another dog. But, so the transmission occurs all the time. But once you give the prevention, 
It kills the larva before it reaches to the adult stage. And can you start the treatment at any age? Preferably no. You want to start between four to six months of age. If your dog, if you have an older dog and you're not sure, you can test to make sure they don't have it already. But I mean, you, you can start it, but there will be reaction. If the animal already have hard worms, there will be reaction. And they could start to cough and they have different stuff. Crawford advises that before you start a hardworm treatment, it is prudent to have the dog tested to ensure yet to ensure they don't have yet heartworms. If they don't yet, it is imperative that the pills are administered each month without fail. If, however, the test shows that your dog already has heartworms, there are special types of treatments that the vet can offer to extend your dog's lifespan. The vet also said there are different brands and prices of heartworm medications the dog owners can ask for, depending on their budget. When we return, father sentenced to 15 years behind bars for incest. Well, I can't believe it, the grill pan is for the grill. Well, don't worry about nothing. If we have a new one, and the Benny's father's day first. What, that they happen again? Yes, and this year, Benny's is giving 90% off store-wide. Yes, 90% off everything. Why we have for the day, bro. But wait, don't forget, the race is still on. The Benny's 100 car race, the race has to once again compete to claim the top prize and become the champion. Anyways, look on the time. If you have a you great line, if you go. Alright, see ya, bro. Huh? New whip? Push the start. Alright, <laughs> big time. Boy! Boy, Kagali push the start, man. The Benny's Father's DFS. Saturday, June 17th. Benny's Superstore. This one you don't want to miss. Smart introduces real unlimited postpaid plans, providing customers with unlimited talk, unlimited text, and unlimited data. Now that's a real great deal. With Smart Plus, Share 1 and 2, and Enterprise 1 and 2 plans, you can talk as much as you want, text as much as you want, and for the first time ever in Belize, you can enjoy unlimited data with your postpaid plan. So come in and sign up for an unlimited postpaid plan and enjoy limitless possibilities. In addition, other plans such as the Flex Junior, Choice and Select have been boosted with a lot more talk, text and data, providing you with the best value for your budget. Be unlimited with Smart. It's time to power your dollar with Smart. Tour Guides, your renewal season is coming up. Please be advised that all tour guide license expires on July 31st, 2023. BTB will start accepting applications for renewal starting May 1st, 2023. Tour guides, we're asking you to apply early in order to have a new and valid license before the current one expires. To submit via email, you'll need a clear scan of each document in PDF format and properly named and labeled. Send your application with all supporting documents to tour guide at belizetourismboard.org and include your full name and your tour guide license number in the subject line of the email. Remember to fill out your applications correctly as BTB will no longer be accepting incomplete applications. Contact our licensing officers at 227-2420 and press 1 if you have any questions or concerns. With eCash, bill payment is extremely convenient, and all utility companies accept eCash payments. What's even better? You get to split bills with your roommates, siblings, or whoever you desire. Simply open your eCash app, go to Bill Pay, tap the respective utility company, enter the information, and pay the bill. Then tap the transaction made. Tap Split the Bill. Select Evenly. Send the request to who you are splitting the bill with and get notified when they pay. Talk about making life easy and avoiding confusion. You can split the bill for restaurants, grocery stores, and for any e-cash payment you make. To find your next yummy meal, 
hair treatment, or chill spot, simply open the app and utilize the geolocation service to see nearby businesses that accept eCash. Geolocation and bill payment make life a whole lot easier. The Ministry of Infrastructure Development and Housing handed over the keys to a new starter home to Jolene Martinez earlier today in Belmopan. Martinez has been a tenant for the past 15 years and finally has the opportunity to move into a house she can now call her own. Present for the handing over was Belmopan Area Representative Oscar Mira. I can't express it. Words, I know have at the moment but feeling I'm very grateful I've been paying rent in Belmopan for the past 15 years and it's not small rent because it's me and my children so this start a home guys you don't know what you have done for me and I will show that how much I appreciate this down the line thank you guys very much it's changing lives um, you, you you cannot I think um, explain how you feel when you own your land, when you own your house. It's a game changer. And this government is committed to making sure that um, first time and owners get that opportunity. I wish we could do more. We've always spoken about trying to do more, um, but we're doing what we can. And, and I think that our track record as, as a PUP government has been that we transform lives, and this is one way of doing it. Um, for the last 13 years under the previous administration, we never heard about a house being built. We never heard about any handing over taking place. Um, and these are not, I know the critics are saying, oh, that was a small house, and um, you know, it's a one bedroom, but it's a starter home. This is what we want um, to ensure that our citizens, our um, members of our community understand that we are starting you with a home. Sand Hill resident Patrick Harris is behind bars after he pleaded guilty to manslaughter in the shooting death of Dylan Greenwich. The incident occurred on December 31, 2016 in Maskell Village at the junction of the Old Northern Highway. Greenwich was shot multiple times and died shortly after while being taken to the KHMH. Harris, on the advice of his attorney, Oscar Salgado, changed his not guilty plea to guilty. After the testimony of the Crown's main witness, a man from the area who witnessed the, fi the fatal shooting. That witness testified that he saw Harris shooting Greenwich. The witness said he had known Harris for over 10 years prior to the shooting. Justice Ricardo O'Neill presided over the case in a trial without a jury. Justice O'Neill will hand down sentencing for Harris on July 3rd. <clears throat> a man who, as a youth several years ago, sodomized his little brother has been sentenced to two years probation with conditions. The man, who was 16 at the time, admitted that he sodomized his younger brother, who was 10 years old when the incident happened. Justice Antoinette Moore, who presided over the matter, placed the man on probation for two years from March of this year to March of 2025. The conditions of his probation are that he must avoid being charged with any other offenses while on probation, and he is not to contact or interfere with his little brother in any way. He was also ordered to compensate his younger brother $1,200 by the end of this year. When he pleaded guilty at the start of his trial, the perpetrator also apologized for his action. A father has been sentenced to 15 years in prison for incest. On May 10th, the man was convicted of six counts of incest after being found guilty of having sexual intercourse with his daughter during a five-year period. The act upon the minor first occurred in 2014, when she was 13 years old and continued through to December 2019. On count one and two, the father was sentenced to 12 years each. On count three and four, he was sentenced to 13 years each. The prison time increased to 14 years for count five and 15 years for count six, for a total of 79 years behind bars. 
But the judge ordered that the sentences run concurrently instead of consecutively. The father will only serve 15 years imprisonment, the largest prison term of all the sentences. The trial started on April 19th and concluded on May 10th when he was found guilty. In the trial, the father was represented by attorney Hurl Hamilton. Up next, does Mayor Wagner enjoy the support of the PUP? Taking its name from the venerable father of the nation, the George Price Highway stretches 77 miles from Belize City to Benque Viejo. Originally built in the 1930s, this cross-country highway system is the artery that links Belize to Central America at the western border with Guatemala. That connection facilitates overland trade, supporting Belize's economic development. Winding its way across the scenic countryside, the George Price Highway, from Roaring Creek to Esperanza, has been fully reconstructed to meet international standards, with particular emphasis on road safety. A shorter and hassle-free commute is best enjoyed when everyone obeys the traffic laws. To reduce the number and frequency of road traffic accidents, it means that a seatbelt must be worn at all times, and the speed limit observed when traveling along the highway. It also means that pedestrians must use sidewalks and crosswalks where available. Buses should only board and discharge passengers at a designated bus stop. Road safety is everyone's responsibility. It begins with you. Smart introduces real unlimited postpaid plans, providing customers with unlimited talk, unlimited text, and unlimited data. Now that's a real great deal. With Smart Plus, Share 1 and 2, and Enterprise 1 and 2 plans, you can talk as much as you want, text as much as you want, and for the first time ever in Belize, you can enjoy unlimited data with your postpaid plan. So come in and sign up for an unlimited postpaid plan and enjoy limitless possibilities. In addition, other plans such as the Flex Junior, Choice, and Select have been boosted with a lot more talk Text and data, providing you with the best value for your budget. Be unlimited with SMART. It's time to power your dollar with SMART. My Social Security. Your direct online access to all your Social Security information. 360 view of all your Social Security information. Registration services, benefits, contributions, and employer services at your fingertips. Enjoy all the new features with your My Social Security account. Register with SSB. Submission of benefit claims. Submission of contribution statements. View contribution record. Enjoy all your My Social Security feature at ssbportal.org.bz. Social Security at your fingertips. Enjoy endless entertainment with NextGen TV. Now available for everyone. NextGen TV is your all-in-one streaming app with over 200 channels of live content, all your live sports, news, and the shows you love. Replay and pause live TV. Enjoy premium Belizean entertainment. Keep up to the latest releases and stream high-quality movies and series on any device. NextGen TV is compatible with Android devices, Amazon Fire devices, iOS, Apple TV, Roku, and Tizen devices. So you can enjoy your favorite content whenever and wherever you want. Contact us for your subscription through our dedicated WhatsApp number, 660-7873. NextGen TV, the ultimate way to watch TV. It's good to keep the environment clean. B-S-W-A-M-A, step up the pace. They're going places to manage the ways. So much we stand and make well sure. No garbage left on the seashore. The whole of Belize we stay clean, cause we don't say word much more. We have pretty environment. So when you see the garbage, panic ground, go off me and just bag it on. Cleanliness has always been second nature to us. So let's work together to keep our surroundings beautiful and healthy. No garbage in Late last year, the 2021 to 2030 National Gender Policy was launched. It focused on six areas, including health, education, wealth, and employment creation, 
gender-based violence, women in power, and decision-making and organizational systems strengthening. It is to ensure equality and equity for all, especially for women and girls. Fast track to today, public and private sector stakeholders are collaborating to launch a national gender equality index to help inform policy and more. News 5's Dwayne Moody reports. Never we look for data. 501 Hub was the location for the launch of a national gender equality index. The survey will measure gender disparities in economic and social life and policy making toward advancing gender equity and equality. In preparing the new iteration of our national gender policy, we remember the main areas of concern. First of all, shelter and safety and security. I don't think, we, I think we have to put that one at the very top. Shelter, safety and security for our girls or women. We recall the horrible um, femicide murder of the young lady in, in, in the Belmopan area, you know? So at the very top of the list in looking at our national gender policy, safety, shelter, security. So we need to measure that and we need to make sure that we, that we can know where we are. Second on the list, I think you, we could say health. The issue of health is so exceedingly important. After that, we have education. I would like to see more, much more early childhood education and preschool attendance. We have to take the lessons from COVID and bring the online education to all our Belizean students. And the earlier we can start with that education of our children, the better. And of course, going right up, bringing our men more into the education system. And of course, we know that even though more women are, are going to high school and uh, going on to tertiary education, we still have difficulties in terms of employment and the earning power of women. The U.S. Embassy in Belize is supporting the initiative. Ambassador Michelle Kwan was the keynote speaker at the launch. Seeing the synergy of the importance of statistical data to understand the disparity and the gender gaps uh, in this country and making sure that there's a measurement of progress for women's equality. The Statistical Institute of Belize will serve as a repository of the data collected from the survey and will include collaboration from various agencies, including public and private sector organizations. Leading the charge is the National Women's Commission. Executive Director Michelle Irving speaks of the importance of the National Gender Equality Index. We cannot do this work in isolation. We need to come together. While we may not all agree on everything, but I'm sure we have more in common than not. So it is very important to highlight collaboration. Um, the process is also very important for us to be able to identify how we will go about doing this, doing this measurement. What will we measure first? You know, why is that important? What do policymakers need to have information on to ensure that then we are making the right decisions? This agenda index, I think it's very important because it will also give the government, I believe, a check and balance especially when it comes to Plan Belize and what they have in place for women. So I think it's, a go it's going to be a very good indicator of where we are in the second year and a half, I believe, of, of the government, the present day government. Dwayne Moody for News 5. Belize City Mayor Bernard Wagner has indicated that he intends to run for a third term for municipal leader. But does he enjoy the support of the People's United Party? Wagner first took office back in March 2018 and was uncontested in the lead-up to the 2021 municipal elections. Will there be other persons throwing their names in the hat to replace Wagner in the upcoming convention? When the media caught up with Deputy Party Leader Cordell Hyde, he was asked about the party's support for Wagner. Here's what he had to say. No, I think the mayor has been... Um uh, Astella Mayor, I think I think he's um, he's done some good things. I'm sure there are things he's done or didn't do that he wish he could have back, as with all of us who are in public life. 
Um, so I think he, he, he would have support. I think relations have um, improved a lot between local government and central government. I, I get the sense that there's a lot more collaboration taking place, as it should be, because that should be a benefit to the, the, the residents of this city when local government and central government are one and the same. We should work together. Um, we've not always been able to do that, but my sense is that we're moving briskly in that direction. But it's a democracy, and you keep hearing all kinds of names and all kinds of people expressing interest. But it's a good thing, because remember not too long ago, we couldn't get people to run for the party in these elections. We had to beg people to run, you know? You remember how long it took for us to get candidates to run 2018? We had to go through a whole lot of things, and now we have um, um, an abundance of candidates. It's a beautiful thing. It's a democracy. Final answer, though, sir. The support will go to him and not to perhaps a female candidate running for the PUP from here. Why are you doing this to me, man? <laughs> right? I've heard multiple people express interest. Um, when we reach that point, we will decide um, how best to move forward. But ultimately, it's a democracy and people are free to aspire. And me, I know I don't have no problem in conventions, you know, because I had to go through two conventions before I won the first time. Two. I had to run for chairman of the constituency, branch in Alekai, and then I had to run for standard bearer two years later because they said this Libra I can't handle this thing and it gone after again and then we had to win the good thing is that it makes you battle tested it makes you battle ready when the time comes for elections you would have been baptized by fire so that's okay and that's the news tonight's broadcast is available at channel5release.com on our Facebook and on YouTube I'm Sabrina Daly thanks for joining us and from all of us here at News 5 good night